Okay, so in this video, we will consider an application of differential equations in finding what's known as orthogonal families of curves. So two definitions. First, what is a family of curves? Well, a family of curves is simply an infinite set of curves. So if you look here at family 1, the curves are given by the equations y equals cx, where c is a parameter allowed to range over all real numbers. So you could have the curve y equals 2x, y equals 5x, y equals negative 4 thirds x, and so forth. So what you have here is an infinite family of lines passing through the origin. So we can draw a few of those. So you could take c to be 1, and then you get the curve y equals x. So line of slope 1 passing through the origin. You could take c to be 2, so y equals 2x. So line of slope 2 passing through the origin. You could take, of course, c to be negative 1. So line of slope negative 1 also passing through the origin. And as you let c vary over all real numbers, you of course get an infinite family of curves that are straight lines, and they all pass through the origin. So that's our first family of curves. Now we want family 2 not to be just any other random family of curves, but we want family number 2 to be the orthogonal family to family number 1. So family 2 will also be an infinite set of curves. And what does it mean when we say that two families of curves are orthogonal to each other? Well, we mean the following. If you take any curve from the first family and any curve from the second family, and you sketch both of these curves in the xy plane, wherever they intersect, they must intersect in a perpendicular fashion. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? How do we find this orthogonal family of curves? Well, let's see first if we can get, in this case, as the first family is fairly simple, if we can guess using our geometric intuition what family number 2 will actually be equal to. Well, again, imagine that you have an infinite set of lines passing through the origin. Let's now look at not finding all the curves in family 2, but just one. Can you think of one curve that you could draw in the xy plane that would meet every one of those lines, as there are infinitely many in a perpendicular fashion? And if you look at it for a while, you can probably come up with the idea of a circle centered about the origin. If you draw a circle centered about the origin, then every line, since it passes through the origin, forms a ray from the center of the circle to the perimeter. And you should know that this actually forms a 90 degree angle. Or at least, at the very least, if your picture is convincing, it should look pretty good. Now, of course, that's just one circle. You can see the radius is irrelevant. You could draw a circle of smaller radius, or a circle of larger radius. And for any given circle and any given straight line, so curve from the first family, it looks like they are intersecting in a 90 degree angle. So now we're left with two questions. This is simply the geometric intuition, and we feel that perhaps family 2 should be the family of circles centered about the origin. Two questions. One, are we right? Is this really the case? Does every circle about the origin intersect every line through the origin in a perpendicular fashion? And two, are these the only curves? Could we perhaps find a curve other than the circle about the origin that will meet every line from the first family in a perpendicular fashion? Well, the answer to both questions is yes. Let's now prove it using the idea of a differential equation. So, curves are perpendicular if their tangent lines are perpendicular. Tangent lines, of course, are simply given in terms of their slopes and the derivative of the curve. So let's differentiate. If y is equal to c times x, then dy over dx is simply c. As c is a constant multiple, the derivative of c times x with respect to x is c. 
There is a problem with this though. The derivative should not depend on c. And you might ask, well, why? Well, as c varies, we have an infinite family of curves, and this other family will also have another arbitrary constant, which we can also think of c. And if you take any given c in this case, and any given c in this case, you'll have two curves, one from each family, and both of these curves, wherever they intersect, must intersect in a 90 degree angle. And that is independent of which value of c you choose in either family. So your derivative cannot depend on c. Well, that's an easy fix. If you go back, the curves are given by y equals c times x, divide across by x, and c is simply y over x. And now we're good to go. The question now is, if at any point on a curve in the first family, sorry, if at any given point you look at a curve in the first family, the derivative is y over x, at the same point, what should the derivative of the second family be equal to? Well, we want this family to be perpendicular to this family. And we know from our previous video that this means that the derivative of the second family should be minus 1 over the derivative of the first family, being given by y over x. We can simplify. This will be simply negative x over y. And now we have a separable differential equation that the curves in family 2 must satisfy. So let's separate the variables. If I multiply by dx on the right and by y on the left, I end up with y dy equals negative x dx. So we have here a differential with respect to y, with respect to x, they are equal, so they have the same integral. Let's integrate the left hand side, so we get y squared over 2 equals, and again, when you have an equality between two indefinite integrals, you can only add one constant on either side. So I'll add the constant of integration on the right hand side. If you integrate negative x dx, you of course get negative x squared over 2 plus c. And let me just now rearrange this to make it look more familiar. We were expecting circles centered about the origin. Well, let's prove that this is actually the case. Let me add x squared over 2 on both sides. So we have x squared over 2 plus y squared over 2 equals c. I can multiply across by 2 and I get that x squared plus y squared equals 2c. But if you think about it, c is nothing but an arbitrary constant. So since c is an arbitrary constant, so is 2c. So I can replace once again 2c by simply c, as it is an arbitrary constant. And now we have the equation given the curve, that is x squared plus y squared, equals some constant. One simple observation first, if c is negative, then we get no solution, as we have a sum of squares, and this is always non-negative, so we ask that c be non-negative. But now if you think of it, we can rewrite the expression in the form x squared plus y squared, and as c is at least 0, c is the square root of c squared. And because c now is a an arbitrary positive constant, I can replace c by, say, r, and the equation becomes quite simply x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is non-negative. And this is the equation, of course, of a circle centered about the origin of radius r. So mission accomplished. We have just proved that the orthogonal family of curves to the original family consists of all circles about the or centered about the origin. And this is our conclusion. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared, where r is, of course, the radius, therefore non-negative. So there you go. So a beautiful application of differential equations. Given an infinite family of curves, 
we can find another infinite family of curves where every curve from the first family intersects every curve from the other family in a perpendicular fashion. And other than this being a really nice geometric application of differential equations, this also has applications in physics. For example, if you considered, say, electric fields in two dimension, then this would actually apply.